Let's try one more example. Let's say 2, evaluate each limit if it exists, obviously. And the first point A, let's try to evaluate the limit when x approaches 1 from 3x plus 4 times 2x minus 5. Now that you started to, um, to be more confident with calculating limits, let's actually approach uh, these examples a little more direct. So what I noticed uh, in the previous examples is that based on those uh, limit properties, all I do after all is plug this value that the variable x is approaching, in this case x is approaching 1, well I'm going to take this 1 and plug it in the expression everywhere where I see x, I'm going to replace that with 1, just like that. It's the same thing that I have did earlier, it's just that I'm going to do it a lot faster. Instead of calculating uh, one by one separately, I can do this to determine the, to evaluate the limit a lot faster. So in this example, I'm going to end up with 3 times, instead of x, I put 1, plus 4 times 2 times, instead of x, put 1, minus 5. And now evaluating this expression, I end up with minus 21. And you see, I can find the limit so much faster. Let's try another one. Point B, let's evaluate the limit from x squared minus x minus 6 over x plus 2 when x approaches 7. So this is the limit of a quotient, but once again I'm going to try to uh, evaluate this directly, not waste the time uh, writing those limits uh, one by one. So now, if I take and plug this uh, value of 7, every time I see x in that expression, I'm going to end up with 7 square minus 7 minus 6 over 7 plus 2. And evaluating this expression, we end up with 36 by 9, which is 4. Remember I told you in the lesson about situations where you're going to encounter an indeterminate form, a special indeterminate form that you can actually evaluate very nicely. Let's see how we can do that. So let's take another limit and see if we can uh, work with that. So I'm going to take exactly the same quotient, the limit of exactly the same quotient by, like before. I'm going to say limit of x squared minus x minus 6 over x plus 2. But this time x is approaching minus 2. Let's see, can we do the same thing like before? You have to do the verification first of all, because I don't I don't have any other way to uh, to determine that this is going to be uh, this is going to work or not. So let's actually uh, plug that uh, value of minus two in uh, everywhere I see x in our expression. So I'm going to end up with minus two square minus minus two minus six, and in the denominator it's going to be minus two plus two. Well, if you evaluate this, you see how you end up with zero over zero, which uh, should signal an alarm because this is not the end of the exercise. You cannot say the limit is undefined because you have 0 by 0. This, it's a very clear clue that you have to work a little, uh, you have to try to approach this limit uh, with the methods that I've already mentioned in the lesson. Use one or another. Dep depends which one applies best in your situation. So. When I'm looking at this expression, I know I can uh, simplify factor and simplify the terms or maybe uh, rationalize. Well, in this case, it looks like I might be able to uh, simplify this expression before evaluating the limit. So, let's see. The x plus 2, I can't really do much with that. But in the numerator, I have this quadratic expression that I'm thinking I might be able to factor it out. So, let's see. Hopefully you remember how to factor a quadratic function. I'll write this separately here so I make it clear for everyone. x squared minus x minus 6. I can write it as x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 because it's exactly like before, right? But now I can see that I can factor for the first two terms an x and we're going to end up with x times x minus 3. And the last two terms... I'm going to factor out 2. 
So I'm going to write here plus 2 times x minus 3. Now again I uh, notice the factor x minus 3 which is common multiplied by what's left is x plus 2. So our limit can continue to be limit when x approaches minus 2 from I take the numerator in factored form, so x minus 3 times x plus 2 over the denominator x plus 2, just like before. Now I can reduce the like terms in the numerator and denominator, this x plus 2, and our limit becomes limit when x approaches minus 2 from x minus 3. So now I can replace the x value with the value it's approaching, minus 2, and the result is minus 5. So you see, it wasn't actually uh, not defined or we just need to work around that in determinate form 0 by 0. At point D, let's evaluate the limit from uh, square root of 16 minus 2x minus 4 over 3x when x approaches 0. Well, you should do the verification by plugging the 0 wherever you see x in this expression, but right away you see in the denominator I have 3 times 0 and the numerator is also easy to determine that 16 minus 2x, in other words 2 times 0, so it's square root of 16, which we know is 4, and then minus 4 is going to be 0 over 0. So we have once again that uh, special indeterminate form of 0 by 0, which we have to work around to evaluate it. It's not guaranteed that you're always going to have a, a limit in that case, but um, more often than not, you do. So, let's see what we can do in, in this case. I'm thinking that the most appropriate method would be rationalizing this expression. What does that mean is multiply by the conjugate of that uh, expression in, in the numerator. The denominator is very simple, 3x. I can't really work with that much. But whatever I have in the uh, numerator looks like I can get rid of that uh, square root by using the following um, trick. So let's continue this limit and say limit when x approaches 0 from square root of 16 minus 2x minus 4 over 3x. So this is exactly what I had before. And now I'm going to rationalize this expression by multiplying the numerator with the conjugate form of it. So multiply by square root of 16 minus 2x plus 4 that would be the conjugate form and because I cannot change the expression just like that I have to divide by the same expression square root of 16 minus 2x plus 4. This entire expression it's basically 1 so I haven't changed anything but I need this in order to get rid of the indeterminate form. You remember this formula a minus uh, b times a plus b that equals to a square minus b square. In our case, square root of 16 minus 2x is a, uh, 4 is b. And that's what I'm going to use uh, to continue this limit when x approaches 0 from, and I'm going to have those terms a square minus b square, right? So square root of uh, 16 uh, minus 2x at power 2 minus 4 at power 2 over and denominator remains whatever the expression was 3x times square root of 16 minus 2x plus 4 in a parenthesis so we don't complicate things much more than that. I'm going to evaluate this uh, expression in the numerator so that square root at power 2 it just disappears so we're gonna be left with 16 minus 2x minus 4 at power 2 16 right and the denominator, I'll continue to uh, copy it just as it was. I am not going to evaluate anything in there. But in the numerator, we notice that we have 16 minus 16, which is 0. So I'm going to continue with this limit when x approaches 0 from minus 2x over 3x times uh, square root of 16 minus 2x plus 4. I can also reduce the x in the numerator with the one in the denominator and um, rewrite the limit once again just to make it clear so I'm gonna say limit when x approaches 0 from minus 2 over 3 times square root of 16 minus 2x plus 4 and now I can take the value of 0 
and plug it where I see x in this expression. It's only one place where I see that. So the expression is going to become minus 2 over 3 times square root of 16 minus 2 times 0 plus 4. And evaluating this expression, we end up with minus 2 over 24. And simplifying this, we end up with minus 1 over 12. This is how you approach indeterminate forms of 0 over 0. With the help of these examples that I gave you, I hope you're going to practice a little more because you need to practice to, uh, to be more confident in order to approach any type of limit. Thanks for watching.